some of the few principles how to present not only architectural work but photography, whatever you have, I don't know, for competitions, expositions, whatever it is. Composition is first. Formats and division. Formats of the paper, of course, we have to print our work. Uh, I don't have to tell you any kind of details, you know about it altogether. Divisions. Two basic rules. Golden triangle or the rule of thirds. Basically, rule of thirds is the photographical principle. Don't put the objects, for example, for visualizations or presentations in the center of the paper or the center of the screen, never. Always try to put them on the side. The easiest way, uh, as you all know, I believe all of you have uh, digital cameras and all the new models have the option to turn on the rule of thirds. Basically, on the small screen you get the division. So try to put the focus on these four points here. You will see some examples later what happens. Spacing, don't cramp the things, leave space around it, give, give it air to breathe. And try to get out of frame if it suits. You will see it uh, in uh, magazines very often. A couple of examples, when an object is centered and when it's put to the side, what happens? You get a focus on the side, you get some air around here. Over here, focus is not in the center, it's in the third part. Over here, a combination, getting out of frame, but this is not the standard format. I have drawn these black lines or gray lines here to show you where the thirds are. So, on this particular example, we don't have uh, the focus on those four points, but more to the side. So we have to adjust every time. This is the way the eye follows what he sees at first. This is the natural thread, of course, for the majority of people, for the right-handed ones. If you have a... So these are the focal points. If you have focal points on different sides, it creates a barrier. So try to avoid it. Horizontal, the same. Don't expose it so much. Try to balance it with something that is vertical. Of course, it's really, it, this really depends on what you are showing. These are only the principles. Over here, you have a couple of examples. As you can see, very, very simple. Horizon. The same photograph. This is cropped. If the horizon is in the middle, or if you pull it lower, or higher. Depends on what you want to show. So try not to have it in the center. Colors. Of course, the technical principles, screen resolution, print resolution. It depends. Uh, you're best off to, of course, talk to the person who's going to do the printing. Uh, to get it right, remember you have, I hope, you have still some old monitors that they are better for uh, color, true colors. LCDs are a, a bit more uh, rough, so you have to calibrate them a bit more. Cross-platform optimization, Mac, uh, Mac and PC and blah blah blah, all those things. Uh, there was a question a couple of years ago. Uh, web designers were forcing the web safe palette, which consisted only of 256 colors. But then again, uh, today you cannot buy a video card which doesn't support at least 16 million colors. So forget about the web safe palette. Camera adjustment. As you can see, this was taken from a uh, Mac. Uh, system preferences, the difference is here. Uh, the PC screens are a bit darker. So it happens to me when I'm working on a Mac, sending a file over, they say, oh, your picture is too dark. So you have to take that into account. Uh, it's not something you can see easily, but try to try to fool around and see what happens. Pantone palette. Uh, if anyone of you has been in touch with uh, graphic designers, you know what the Pantone palette is. <coughs> Uh, the color on the screen, of course, is not the same one you get on the paper. So, if you are using one particular color, you must know what kind of uh, RGB value is used on the screen and what kind of uh, CMYK or whatever is called for the printing. So, those are the two different things. Color combining. Also, I'm sure you've heard of it. <coughs> Complementary colors and how to mix the colors. Uh, this is particularly uh, important if you are doing some post-processing in Photoshop of your renderings. Uh, I have a couple of tutorials from different magazines or books or whatever, uh, how to improve the overall look of your renderings. 
uh, basically you have uh, some layers you can add in Photoshop with which you can emphasize darker, uh, darker tones, lighter tones or the mid tones depending on what you want to get what happens if you emphasize darker or lighter tones uh, images get oversaturated so you have to just pull the color a bit down uh, if anybody wants to talk about it we can do it later on I have a couple of good examples text of course the font types serif and sans serif I don't know how to translate it in French uh, as you can see the examples over there uh, serif are easier to read these little ones with those finishing glitches or points sans serif are better for headlines uh, because if you have a full page or multiple pages of uh, sans serif fonts they are a bit harder to read this is very 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 important people try to uh, it's not to play and then they end up using 10, 5, whatever, how many fonts you must use maximum of two fonts per page this is a good 